Hi all, my name's Trish Roberts and you're listening to Live Vegan. This is podcast number 18. With the kind permission of Professor Gary L. Francione, I would like to share one of his earlier blog essays from 2006 titled Veganism, the Fundamental Principle of the Abolitionist Movement. Many animal welfare advocates claim that the rights position which seeks the abolition of animal use is not practical because it rejects incremental change and does not provide any guidance for what we should do now, today, to help non-humans. These critics of the abolitionist position argue that we have no choice but to pursue more animal welfare regulations, more attempts to make animal exploitation more, quote, humane, end quote, if we want to do something, quote, practical, end quote, to help animals. The notion that animal welfare regulations provide significant protection for animal interests is about as wrong as wrong gets. As I have discussed in my writing, because animals are property, they are only economic commodities with nothing but extrinsic or conditional value. Their interests have no inherent value. As a result, standards that require their, quote, humane, end quote, treatment are interpreted in an economic sense and limit protection to what will provide an economic benefit to humans. Purported improvements in animal welfare do very little, if anything, to increase protection for animal interests. For the most part, they do nothing more than to make animal exploitation more economically efficient and socially acceptable. Moreover, there is no historical evidence that animal welfare regulation leads to abolition. The welfareists are also mistaken to claim that the rights position does not provide any practical incremental steps that we can take on the road to abolition. There is very clear guidance for incremental change. Veganism. Veganism is not merely a matter of diet. It is a moral and political commitment to abolition on the individual level and extends not only to matters of food but to clothing, other products and other personal actions and choices. Becoming vegan is the one thing that we can all do today, right now, to help animals. It does not require an expensive campaign, the involvement of a large organization, legislation, or anything other than our recognition that if, quote, animal rights, end quote, means anything, it means that we cannot justify consuming or using meat, fish, dairy, eggs, or other animal products. Veganism reduces animal suffering and death by decreasing demand. It represents a rejection of the commodity status of non-humans and recognition of their inherent value. Veganism is also a commitment to non-violence and the animal rights movement should be a movement of peace and should reject violence against all animals, non-human and human. Many animal advocates claim to favor animal rights but continue to eat animal products. Indeed, many, quote, leaders, end quote, of the animal movement are not vegans. That is no different from someone who claims to be in favor of the abolition of slavery, but who continues to own slaves. There is no meaningful distinction between eating flesh and eating dairy or other animal products. Animals exploited in the dairy industry live longer than those used for meat, but they are treated worse during their lives and they end up in the same slaughterhouse after which we consume their flesh anyway. There is probably more suffering in a glass of milk or an ice cream cone than there is in a steak. And anyone who thinks that an egg, even a so-called, quote, free-range, end quote, one, is any less a product of horrible suffering than is meat, does not know much about the egg industry. If someone stops eating flesh but eats more dairy or eggs as a result, in brackets, as many, quote, vegetarians, end quote, do, in brackets, This may actually increase suffering. In any event, to maintain that there is moral distinction between eating flesh and eating dairy, eggs, or consuming other animal products is as silly as maintaining that there is a moral distinction between eating large cows and eating small cows. Rather than embracing veganism as a clear moral baseline, the animal advocacy movement has instead adopted the notion that we can act ethically and still consume animal products. Consider the following examples, in brackets, of which there are many, in brackets. Peter Singer maintains that we can be, quote, conscientious omnivores, end quote, and exploit animals ethically if, for example, we choose to eat, quote, free-range, end quote, animals who have been raised and killed in a relatively, quote, humane, end quote, manner. In brackets, from Peter Singer's book, The Way We Eat, 
why our food choices matter. End brackets. Singer praises purveyors of, quote, humanely, end quote, exploited animals such as Whole Foods Markets, Incorporated, and its CEO, John Mackey, as, quote, ethically responsible, end quote, and he describes strict veganism as, quote, fanatical, end quote, on page 281. Tom Regan featured Mackey as the keynote speaker for a 2005 conference entitled The Power of One, which focused on the ability of individuals to make meaningful changes for non-humans. Reagan celebrates Mackey and Whole Foods as, quote, a driving force behind higher standards in animal welfare, end quote. Peter gave Whole Foods an award in 2004, claiming that the company, quote, has consistently done more for animal welfare than any retailer in the industry, requiring that its producers adhere to strict standards, end quote. Peter also gave an award in 2004 to slaughterhouse designer Temple Grandin, declaring her, quite remarkably in my view, to be a, quote, visionary, end quote. Humane Farm Animal Care, with its partners, the Humane Society of the United States, the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, Animal People, World Society for the Protection of Animals, and others, promotes the certified humane raised and handled label, which it describes as, quote, a consumer certification and labeling program, end quote, to give consumers assurance that a labeled, quote, egg, dairy, meat, and poultry product has been produced with the welfare of the farm animal in mind, end quote.